Blossom by ConsultWebs. Breakthrough insights to build a thriving law firm with your host, Tanner Jones. Hello, all you Lawsome listeners. Today on the show, I'm excited to be talking with Chez Cheddar, founder of Client Ping and RepSite, two applications that attorneys are now using to help manage their law practices. Chez is a highly driven IT executive with over 20 years of experience in technology, business development, and management. Today's topic is technology within the law practice. Chez, welcome. Thanks for joining the show today. Thanks for having me. Good. So let's let's just dive right in. I'm really interested in in all things tech when it comes to law firms and obviously customer service, the ability to service a client through communication is a critical piece in any operations, including law firms. And, and on this show, Chez, we talk a lot about tech uh, within the operations, within marketing. Many times we find there are different tools that lawyers can leverage to ultimately grow their business. And certainly law firms need to take care of their clients beginning all the way from the very beginning, that first contact that's made with a prospective client. And that can be through, you know, whether it's a phone call that comes into the office, a text message or through the website. All of that's important, but I'd love to hear from you specifically. Why do you, why would you say this is so important in the legal profession with respect to starting so early in that first contact? Sure. You know, healthcare has really set the bar for this. I think everybody's become used to getting test, text message appointment reminders and requests for feedback on how the process has gone from your dentist or your doctor or things like that. People have an expectation now that they can have a text message conversation with somebody that they're doing work with. And I think it starts there. Uh, it also makes a firm look very professional because it, it's kind of viewed still as a, a high tech item to be able to text back and forth or have appointment reminders. Uh, and then on the website, you know, people don't use phone books anymore. I'm sure we'll talk about that later a little more, but they're looking up their, their lawyers to find who to do business with. So having a proper presence online, but also being able to interact from your web page with the law firm and maybe set an appointment or text from there, something like that. That's becoming more and more point, important. People really expect to be able to do that these days. Yeah, even if there's there's resistance to change within a law practice, which in many instances there certainly is, you know, we find that the use of technology in, in most operations is going to be inevitable. And we're seeing that. I mean, just look in the, since the pandemic era, um, seems like law firms were pushed ahead by 10 years or more just out of necessity. And, and thank right. goodness the technology was available for them to do so. But one related topic is around, we've already touched on it, the concept of client intake. You know, that first, that, that immediate uh, introduction to the firm and ultimately how the firm is responding in that. That right. ongoing communication is, as I've said before, it's critical. It's necessary in order to, one, differentiate the law firm. Everyone wants to be heard and, and to be responded to, uh, but ultimately it helps them grow because you're, you're never going to convert as many prospective clients if you're not serving them from that first contact. Would you agree? It's absolutely right. I mean, the, the marketing component of, of law firms means you need to be front and center with, with your clients. They're driving by billboards every day. They're getting ads in their email for other law firms all the time. So those little reach outs, staying in contact from the very early stages of onboarding a client throughout the life cycle of that client, is very important. And it also leads to a, a, a more complete experience for that client. You know, you find that the better contact you've had or the more times you've been in contact with the client, the happier the outcome will be, the higher they're gonna rate you, the more likely they are to recommend you to somebody else. Those little touches often matter as much as the actual in-office appointment when you're working through a divorce or a will or something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, you've, you've hit on a few of those advantages, which clearly lead to just creating a better experience, first and That's foremost. Right. And those experiences ultimately result in a lot of things. And I want to get into that reviews piece in a minute, because I think that's important. Before we do that, how can text message appointment reminders and scheduling automation ultimately ease the workload for lawyers? Because I, I, I'll, I'll preface this by saying I think most firms, they understand technology is important. Uh, but but I, there's also this resistance to to change, yeah. and there's this this hesitancy that it's going to take a lot more time to figure out. And clients seem to be okay with how we've always done things. How, how would you approach that? Well, first of all, I'd say there there seems to be a resistance among lawyers, um, especially smaller firms, that think that they have to have some super complicated, um, expensive law firm management software 
in order to do a lot of the things we're talking about here today. And that's just absolutely not the case. Any size firm with whatever you use, even if you manage your practice out of Excel and Outlook, there are tools that can make your life a lot easier. The reasons I would say that that's important to do um, are, are really broad. First of all, we talked about the professional side of things. People expect that they're going to get appointment reminders. They expect to reach out via text messages, things like that. So there's an image side of things. But there's also an operational side of things, especially post-pandemic. We find law firms struggling to fill positions. Office staff, staff time is valuable. And any time spent away from billable hours is obviously detrimental to, to the overall balance sheet. So anything you can do to automate the things like getting on the phone and trying to track down a client for an appointment, um, comparing schedules, time spent with an attorney, emailing back and forth about openings in a calendar, you know, any of that kind of stuff you can eliminate and move to billable time has a, a dramatic impact on, on the overall earnings of a particular firm. Uh, and then also for onboarding new clients, the ability to drive to somebody to a website and have them schedule an appointment, you know, drive interest for them to, to want to do business with your, you as an attorney, and then have them be able to click right there and schedule an appointment Capturing them right there is very important because you don't know if they're going to wait till you're open tomorrow and call. You know, there, there's a significant percentage of folks who will fall through the cracks and not ultimately make that appointment if they can't do it online. So, you know, right. really image billings and, and efficiency, you know, that's really where you want to capitalize on, especially text messaging. That's that's so good and, and so, so important, you know, catering not to your own preferences or to how you've always ran the business, but really keeping an eye on what are what are consumers doing? What are their preferences? I, I've said this internally at Consult Webs, um, uh, which is which is the, the engine behind the Lawson podcast. And, and I've talked to other clients about this, that this recession that we seem to be heading into inevitably, the firms that truly invest in customer service, truly invest in serving the client, those are the ones that are going to come out of this on top. I, I firmly believe that. And we've already touched on the reviews concept and being able to engage users offering a great experience, which in, you know, ultimately will increase the likelihood of, of garnering more five-star reviews online. Can you speak to how this type of technology will ultimately benefit a firm in the, in the realm of reviews specifically? Lawyers are a really interesting problem when it comes to reviews because um, often you have unrealistic expectations on outcomes. If I'm running a retail operation, odds are if I'm nice to somebody when they come in and I have a product and I can sell them and it, and it goes okay, I can maybe get a good review out of that. But um, and when you're a lawyer, if you're, let's say, in a child custody case, the outcome is not going to always be pleasing to your client. And that can lead to some reviews for, for you as an attorney that are not great. And, and so there's an importance that you're managing that process because it's a little bit more tricky for an attorney. So I'd say that up front. Um, it, the other thing that's pretty interesting is because we don't use phone books anymore, people are going to find you online. That's how they're finding attorneys. Mm -hmm. Even if they know their attorney, they're still going to Google the attorney to find the phone number, right? It, so it's so incredibly important that you have a, a presence online that people can find. But 88% of consumers choose who they do business with by reviews. So having, a, a, first of all, a number of reviews, but obviously then high scoring reviews are incredibly important for somebody to find you. On top of that, Google's algorithm and Microsoft and everybody else, they partly determine who's on the top list. If you say lawyers in Detroit, for example, the, num the first 10 that come up for folks are partly determined significant, in a significant portion by how many reviews and what your score is. So mm -hmm. it helps your placement. But then obviously, you know, being on that front page, you've still got to have a good number of reviews that are high quality that people are going to choose you as an attorney and builds trust. And that's ultimately how you're going to drive more business. Agreed. In serving law firms over the years, social proof, you know, like what you're referring to there, just the right. online reputation. If somebody's going to Google your name, clearly there's intent to, to look you up, to likely call you, to maybe even hire you. Maybe they found you in search. Maybe they knew of you. Maybe they've been referred to you. Regardless, they all tend to land there on that main real estate. That's right. And and that's that's the differentiator. And we stress that to clients so often. You know, we can get a firm ranking at the top of the search engines for competitive terms, but if the two competitors that are sitting above you and below you have you know two times or three times the amount of reviews and higher ratings. Who are they going to, who's that prospective client going to choose in that moment? 
Uh, I just cannot stress that that point enough. Yep. And then you're going to have clients as a lawyer who, who will leave a review based on the expectation thing I talked about. You will occasionally get a poor review. It's just a, a fact of life. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people want to reach out to Google and complain and say, get this review removed. And I'll, I'll just give you a little hint. That's probably not going to happen. Google generally will not remove any reviews. So the rule of thumb is, first of all, you need to reply to that review. Um, be friendly. Do not get into an argument. Um, you know, apologize if necessary, whatever, so that somebody who's reading that negative review can see that you care about what happened. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that review can be buried very easily by generating a lot more good ranking reviews. And, and gen, you know, the rule of thumb would be if you have a poor review, five or 10 good ones, probably going to counteract that. And it will, you know, your score obviously will come up and people won't see that review. So that certainly can be done manually if you, uh, you know, ask clients for reviews. And that's where most law firms start out. They'll say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, if I know somebody's happy, I'm going to ask them for a review. But the reality is that simple process of asking does not tend to generate hardly any reviews. People leave the office, they forget to do it. So a service like Repsite helps you um, import client contacts or connect to your practice management system if you have one to automate the process of requesting feedback from your clients. And it's important, not just for what we talked about, Tanner, it's obviously important to get your ranking up and get clients in the door but also for understanding how you're managing your practice. What are we doing wrong? Is there a staff member somewhere that people don't like or are having bad experiences with or something that you can improve? So gathering that feedback from your clients, services like Repsite allow you not just to generate Google and Facebook and Ava reviews, but also understand the experience your clients are having so you can make those critical improvements to your firm to, to get better. So important. Uh, any business owner, they, they heard that. I know that. They heard that piece. <laughs> That's good. Let, let's keep moving. We've we've talked a little bit about uh, the 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 challenge of adapting to the ever evolving technology, especially when it comes to managing a successful law practice. So I'd I'd like to spend a little time as we wrap up around that topic. And Ches, you've obviously worked um, in, in this in the tech industry for quite some time, and I'd love to hear how you've consulted business owners or what you've seen. That that ultimately helps business owners evolve a little ease more easily and and really adapt to this constant change of tech. Any any suggestions or feedback you can offer our listeners? I think the biggest thing for me is um, if you start just googling law firm software, just the way the internet works, you're going to find a billion things. And and filtering out the noise from things that are actually useful for clients is is a little difficult. So I think things like podcasts, for for example, the Lawson podcast when they talk about technology. Um, there's uh, some filtering that happens there because they're talking to folks that they know have real clients in the world and are doing business with law firms and people they've spoken to. So that helps you a little bit. Uh, word of mouth is also great. Um, any kind of conference you go to, make it a point of asking other attorneys, what did your office have success with in technology? Um, what tools are you using now post pandemic, for example, that have helped you be more efficient, onboard more clients and so on? Uh, word of mouth is still one of the best ways of finding other technology. And then find some trusted websites too. Similar to the podcasts, um, there are some really good lists out there for people who are attorneys who have an interest in technology, who have tried different technologies, and and will uh, you know give you some advice on things to try. Ches, do you have any any predictions or projections of the future and what law firms could potentially be anticipating when it comes to tech? I think the biggest thing is we're we're at the very beginning stages of law firms and, and text message uh, appointment confirmation and automation. I think that still hasn't, it's probably less than 10% of law firms right now. So it's a real quick way for you to get a lot of efficiency and also distinguish yourself a little bit from the pack today. Um, that tool, for example, with client ping allows you to start confirming automatically any upcoming appointments on your calendar. So obviously the result of that is you get fuller calendars, the no shows completely go away, your billings are better. But then there's a couple of things that happen once you've implemented that. First of all, you're um, able to now do what's called automatic rescheduling. So if somebody declines an appointment, they can automatically receive a link in a text message that shows them availability on your calendar. You as an attorney decide what's available and what's not. And of course, it takes into account anything that's already on your calendar. But that, that, uh, that client then can, with a single click in a text message, move the appointment to a new slot. It keeps the attorney and the staff updated on what happens. And you haven't had to call the, the customer to, to move that, the, the client to move that appointment or anything. It all happens behind the scenes. You're saving time doing that. And then we talked about the scheduling piece too. I think more and more attorneys are realizing clients want to be able to schedule. The first time they click on your website, the first time they search for you and find you, give them a link to be able to set up an appointment. It's a scary thing for attorneys because their calendar is their life and they don't want to give up control on that. But 
you know, I'd encourage people to try just a little bit of uh, opening that up and trying it for a week or two to see what you think. Allow clients to schedule. You can control the length and when and how often and all that kind of stuff, but allow them to create an appointment and you'll start to bring in new business that you wouldn't have gathered otherwise. So I, I think that's the immediate future. I think the long term for attorneys is um, there's definitely a drive for practice management. We see a lot of our attorneys moving towards apps like Clio and uh, all, you know, there's obviously a host of those applications that do that. But um, I think that makes sense for a lot of attorneys. And then there are a lot of attorneys that are small, you know, or one or two attorneys in their practice that do just fine managing things, as I said earlier, out of Outlook and, and uh, you know, Excel, things like that. And that's fine too. But I would just say, you'll see more of these small tools like client ping and website being plugged into whether you are in a Clio or not, um, you know, you'll start plugging in some of these smaller tools to start to automate some of that workflow. Ruby is another good example of seeing a lot more attorneys start to turn to services like Ruby for virtual receptionists to not have to keep staff in seats. And I think that the staffing challenges we see are only going to continue. It's tough to hire people. It's expensive. Um, so if you have some services that can help you maximize, say, one office staff instead of two, that's a huge change for a small attorney's office. I would agree. I would agree. I mean, the things that these firms are spending manual time and attention on, whether it be them, the attorneys themselves, staff, receptionists, whatever it may be, like that that clearly is the way to begin opening up capacity and in turn yep. pivoting that open capacity into high high performance activities. That's the beauty of tech. And Ches, I think you you did a great job in articulating that value and we're grateful for you joining the Lawsome show today. If if law, our Lawsome listeners are, are planning to reach out to you, what's the best way they can contact you? You can read me at Ches at clientping.com. That's C-E-H-E-Z at clientping.com. Thanks so much, Ches. Take care. Thanks for having me. Lawsome by ConsultWebs with Tanner Jones. For show notes, links, and info, go to consultwebs.com slash podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. Watch for the next Lawsome episode to discover more breakthrough insights to build a thriving law firm.